Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial on using formulas and functions in Excel. Formulas are used by Excel to perform calculations and other actions on a worksheet. Let's take a look at a worksheet containing a sample household budget. This worksheet has two basic categories, income and expenses. Income is made up of a regular paycheck and freelance work. So total income should be the regular paycheck plus the freelance work. For the month of January, this would be B4 plus B5. Since we want to add the contents of January's regular paycheck, which is B4 or $4,600, and the contents of the cell for January's freelance work, which is cell B5, so B4 plus B5 would be $4,600 plus $1,200. Now we want to create a formula that calculates our total income. We can't just put B4 plus B5 into B6. Every formula in Excel must begin with an equal sign. So the proper way to write the simple formula is equal to B4 plus B5. And we put that into B6 because that's where we want the calculation to go. To do this, first highlight B6 by clicking into it. Check the name box to make sure it says B6. If you see B6 in the name box and you see a highlight around cell B6, you know that the cursor is in B6, so now you can start to type the formula into the formula bar. Here we can see equal B4 plus B5 typed into the formula bar, and in the cell B6 we can see the calculations are $5,800. Now let's say we want to use a function to do the calculations for us. First of all, what is a function? A function is simply predefined formulas that Excel offers. So let's say, for example, we want to calculate the average monthly grocery expense. You can see groceries in January was $600, in February $650, in March $625, in April the groceries were $645, and so on. So we have 12 months of grocery expenses. The average would be to add up all 12 and divide by 12. That's how you calculate an average. Well, let's say we want Excel to do that using the average function. We could enter a formula where we add up all 12 months of grocery expenses and then divide by 12, or we can use the average function provided by Excel. Let's see how this would work. Let's type in average grocery expenses. In A16. Now let's highlight B16, and that's where we're going to put our formula for average. Up here we have the Insert Function tool. Let's click on that. A dialog box comes up. I know I have to use the, the average, but I could also search for a function by typing in a brief description of what I want to do. So I can say, calculate the average. And go, and it gives me the average. Okay, I'm going to click OK. And I have average B9 through B15. Excel will assume that I want to add up the column. It usually goes for the column, but I don't want to add up the column. I want to add up the row of groceries, groceries across. So I'm going to highlight cell B10, and then drag that across to M10. So I have the groceries highlighted from January through December. January groceries is in B10, and so we have B10 here, and December groceries is M10, so we have M10 here, the colon means through. So I'm going to hit OK, and you can see in the formula bar it says equal, every formula has to start with an equal, then the function average, and it's telling Excel to calculate the average of whatever is in cells B10, through M10. So now I can take a look at B16 and I see $641.66. So that's my average grocery expense. And if I were to change some of the numbers in here, let's say 45 for April, um, let's say April was a really bad month and I spent $700 on groceries. So I'm going to change that to $700 and watch what happens to sell B16 when I hit return. Now the average grocery bill was not 641 but rather 646. This function adds up all the values that are in the cells B10 through M10 and then divide by how many numbers there are to give the arithmetic mean. Why don't we do the median? 
The median is the middle value of a set of data. That means half the numbers are below that value and half the numbers are above. Let's say we want to calculate our median grocery expense. Let's type a label in A17 and let's call it median grocery expense. And let's say I don't know the exact format of median. Excel has a lot of functions and maybe I just don't know it. So let's click on insert function and type a brief description of what you want to do and then click go. Uh, I want to get the median and so it gives me the median here and I click go. Okay. So now I have to give the numbers I want the median for and that's the grocery numbers, the grocery expenses from B10 through M10. Okay. So again I have the median B10 through M10. I'm going to click OK and it gives me the median grocery expense as $637.50. Now let's go back over here where I added 4600 plus 1200 and you see in the formula bar equal B4 plus B5. There's a function for that as well and that is the sum function. So let's type in the sum function instead of this formula and so we type in equal SUM and you see Excel auto fills the function as I'm typing it, S it gives me all the S functions as I type U it gives me all the SU functions as I type M it gives me all the SUM functions and next to SUM it tells you what that function does so I'm going to sum and let's say I'm going to sum you always have a bracket and then number one and number two number one is B4 and I can drag that down to B5 and then I have to close the bracket and now I have the sum of B4 through B5 as my function hit enter and it gives me fifty eight hundred dollars so now I have the sum function in B6 I have the average function in B16 and I have the median function in B17. All right, let's go back to B6. So now for B6, I have the total income for the month of January, but I have 11 other months to fill. So we can simply copy and paste the formula or I can use autofill to autofill the, the months across row six. So let's click on the fill handle and drag it across. And when I release, it autofills the total incomes for all the months. Now what's interesting is it didn't autofill 5800 across all the months but rather it gave the total for each month. So for example February is 4600 plus 1250 an extra $50 and that's because when I autofilled it it didn't fill in the formula B4 through B5 it uses what is called a relative cell reference. So when I click on C6, you can see that the sum C4 through C5 is in C6. If I click in cell D6, you can see the formula now is D4 through D5. Excel uses as a default a relative cell reference. That means in column B, the function is to sum B4 plus B5. But if I copy and paste the formula into column C, it will assume you want to add C4 plus C5 and will update the function to say sum C4 through C5. And the new total is 5850 instead of 5800. By default, all cell references are relative, which means the cell reference is relative to its location and changes relative to a new location when you copy and paste formulas or functions. So if, for example, when you're in cell B6, you write your formula as we did, then B4 and B5 are relative to B6, so B4 is two cells above B6, and B5 is one cell above B6. So if you copy and paste the formula into C6, then two cells above that is C4, and one cell above that is C5. Since the formula depends on its current cell location, it is called a relative cell reference. We autofilled all the months across and you saw when we click through each of these in the formula bar 
the cell references changed as we went across. Sometimes we don't want Excel to update the formula relative to the new location and in that case we would want to use what is referred to as an absolute cell reference. An absolute cell reference does not change its cell reference relative to a new location, rather it remains fixed in a given location. So with an absolute cell reference, B4 and B5 would remain B4 and B5 no matter where the formula was pasted. So if we used an absolute cell reference in B6 instead of a relative cell reference, then the formula would be B4 plus B5 in all of the cells across C through M. Of course, that's not what we want to do in this case, but sometimes you do want to have an absolute cell reference. So in order to fix a cell so that it is not relative, we use a dollar symbol in front of the row and column address. So let's take a look at how this would be done. Now to fix the formula so that B4 through B5 is an absolute cell reference, we put a dollar symbol in front of the column reference and a dollar symbol in front of the row reference. So it's dollar sign B and dollar sign 4. And let's put another dollar sign in front of this B and a dollar sign in front of the 5. Now what I've done is I've fixed the cell reference to be an absolute cell reference. So now when I copy and paste the formula f across row 6 through M6, you can see 5800 is in each and every cell. Now that doesn't make sense in this case, so let me erase that. <clears throat> okay, let's go back to the formula. Let's take away the absolute cell reference, so let's take away the dollar sign. Okay, and now we're back to an absolute cell reference, and now when I autofill this across row 6, it is using relative cell reference and you can see that the numbers are updated according to their cell location. So E6 has E4 plus E5. Let's look again at how formulas work. We used a simple formula to add B4 plus B5. Remember to always start a formula with an equal sign. So we typed into the formula bar equal to B4 plus B5. Let's say we want to take off 10% from our regular paycheck and 5% from our freelance paycheck to put away in an IRA. So to construct a formula to do this, we would need to multiply B4 by 10% or 0 0.10 and B5 by 0 0.05 and then subtract this from the total and that would calculate our deductions that we want to put into an IRA. The symbol used in Excel to multiply is the asterisk. So let's go back to the spreadsheet and make a new label, Income After Deductions. We will place the formula for this in cell B16. Now you might think the formula should be B6, which is total income, minus B4 times 10% plus B5 times 5%. But this would be wrong. The problem is that in math and in Excel, we have what are called rules of precedence. You might recall this from basic math. We use the term PEMDAS or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. This means that you should first do what's in parentheses, then exponentiation, then multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction, reading from left to right. The caret symbol is exponentiation and the asterisk is multiplication in Excel. So to write this formula correctly, we need to follow the PEMDAS rules of precedence. Here is how the formula should be written. Notice all the parentheses. Excel does what's in the innermost parentheses first. So we have B4 times 10% in the innermost parentheses and B5 times 5% in the innermost parentheses. So that's done first. Then the two are added. That's the outer parentheses. And then that is subtracted from B6. So let's type in that formula. Equal to, we start always with equal to, B6 minus parentheses B4 B4 times 0.10 or 10 percent close parentheses now notice as I do that those innermost parentheses are red plus now we have the innermost parentheses red 
B5 times 0.05, innermost parentheses, outermost parentheses. With nested formulas or functions, Excel colors the parentheses to help ensure that they are matching open and closed pairs. Now if I hit enter, we have 5280 is our income after our deductions. And as before, what I can do is autofill that across. And because I use relative cell references, the calculations are based on the relative cell location. Let's look at the column for March that's in the D column. If I click on D16, you can see the formula is D6 minus D4 times 10% plus D5 times 10%. One more thing we should discuss is to understand how to format the data that appears in each cell. The way the data is formatted controls how it will be displayed on the worksheet. The default format is general. We can change this format by first selecting the cell or cells we want to format. So we have B16 selected, then select Home. It is already in the Home tab. And then choose a format from the drop-down menu in the Numbers group. Here we have the numbers group, and we have a format here. This happens to be in dollars, so I'm going to click on dollars. And you can see it added a dollar sign. That doesn't change any of the calculations. It just changes the way the number appears on the worksheet. And this is nice when you want to print it out and have dollar signs. Let me pull the fill handle across, and then the format is copied across to each of the cells. You can see the various formats we have here. We even have date and time, and those are also considered number formats. The number is taken as the days since a specified point in time. So you can actually add or subtract the number of days it takes you to do something, or the amount of time it takes you to do something. One more thing I want to show you before we end this video, and that is how to add comments. You can add comments or notes to a cell, just click on the cell that you want to add notes to. Let's say I want to add notes over here. And then select the Review tab. Click New Comment. And then you can add notes to yourself or comments to yourself. This tutorial covered the basics of formulas and functions. Remember to begin each formula and function with an equal sign and follow the rules of precedence. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video and I hope you learned something.